Welcome. We've been now talking about the communication plan and the most important element that you have to take into consideration. In my previous video, I've actually underlined the importance of communicating in order to avoid the rumors meal. The rumors meal is very, very dangerous because people can actually base their perception on personal experiences and sometimes, actually most of the cases, actually change management is linked to negative experiences because there are not many companies that can actually handle it in the correct way. So always try to um, keep the rumor mill down and to communicate in a consistent manner. So first of all, you will have to determine as and when to communicate. The communication has to be timely. So a lot of organizations think that uh, it's just enough to communicate once. So basically there is an announcement, uh, something along the lines, uh, we are merging with uh, company A, or you know we have been acquired by company B, and that's it. That's not enough, and that's because as soon as uh, the uh, rumor is broken, now, of course, uh, the first thing that will go to uh, the employee's mind is what, what's going to happen to me, what is going to happen to my job. So it's not enough to communicate once. Also, sometimes companies think that uh, um, thorough communication, I mean, giving a massive message, uh, uh, when saying for the first time to the employees we have been merged or actually we have been acquired uh, is sufficient. Actually, when someone is given a shocking information, they tend not to retain all the information. Actually, they tend to blank out. So you will have to provide uh, the basic information on, for example, uh, what happened, the reasons, uh, and what will happen to the employees. But this message will have to be reinforced on an ongoing basis. Uh, and that's actually why it is important to have a proper communication plan. If you have a communication manager within your team or within your company, use this person. They are specialized in doing this. Um, but if you are a smaller organization, again, think about the culture of the company, whether it is uh, uh, the company gets getting merged. In this case, of course, you will have to take into consideration the differences in culture. Or for example, if it is an acquisition, take into consideration the culture of the company that you have acquired. For example, if it is a, uh, for example, a more traditional company, um, for uh, certain medias will be better than others, like for example, newsletters, uh, one-to-ones. Uh, as for example, if it is a creative company, you for example, could use avatars, you could use videos and things like that. Uh, of course, you have to take into consideration the reality of the company. There are some elements that you would have to comply with. First of all, you have to be honest. Sometimes uh, executives don't want to give the bad news. Uh, it's not a very safe strategy. And that's because if you're saying to the employees that uh, uh, as a result of this merger, there will be no redundancies whatsoever. And then after a month, you go uh, through a redundancy program. Uh, basically, you will lose your credibility. And when uh, executives look cre lose credibility, it is a recipe for disaster. Because no matter what you will say, the employees simply will not trust you. Especially those who are the key employees. We start thinking, oh, hang on, what's going on here? My better jump ship. So always be very consistent. And if you have to give a negative uh, news, uh, of course, take into consideration how to deliver the message, but don't try to basically pretend that everything will be fine if it's not the case. If you're giving a bad news, always explain the reason why you actually have to take a specific course of action. So if you're going to make redundancies, explain the reason why uh, you uh, will have, for example, to reduce the workforce by 10% by 20%. Change management initiatives uh, like integration are not going to be successful if you don't get the buy-in from the employees. Uh, and unless you have resolved the question, what is going to happen to me, people will not actually engage. And that's because if, for example, you're telling me that uh, my job is still there, of course, it's in my interest to engage. But if you tell me your job is going to go, to be honest, my engagement will be equal to zero. So always be honest, so always deliver the message in a timely manner. And most of all, be consistent. So if, for example, you're saying that uh, the CEO of uh, the newly merged company is going to speak to the workforce uh, once every quarter, do it. Because, uh, I mean, the first time you may get away with it, but, for example, uh, on the third quarter, uh, the um, 
executive is not complying with this promise, people will just completely lose trust. So again, we go back to the um, element of trust and the element of honesty. So if you're saying that you're going to do something, do it. If you see that, for example, there is something that is going to prevent you from complying with a message that you have already delivered to the workforce, explain why you will not be in the position to comply with that. I call it promise in brackets. Uh, people in times of change uh, get very demotivated when we look uh, later at the, um, the reactions of individuals uh, and they are actually checking, they are keeping track uh, of what the executives are doing. Uh, if you are not consistent, you are going to lose them. And actually trying to implement change with a workforce that is not engaged is fundamentally impossible. Uh, we will look at uh, future in future videos at uh, the media that you can use in order to deliver the communication in an effective way. Thank you so much for watching.